we'll see. But anyhow, sure. I have this big old hair thing. Okay. Um, yeah. So a couple things. We'll start. We'll start right into this real quick, okay? And because one of the slides talked about about me, so we to that point. I'll talk, I'll talk about me. About me. The storybook. Has anybody used storybook before? You got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. How about Jest? Let me use Jest. Jest. There's more. More Jest. Okay. How about Cypress? Oh, nice. So we're so we're teaching you guys in school here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. So storybook is one of the main testing tools. All the tools will do everything. I hate that because I prefer to use a tool for its purpose. It's like you like the whole saying when when you have a hammer, everything the nail. Um, that's not really it's not really what you want to use for everything now. So jump in. You want so, to use the sawzall? Yeah. So sawzall. <laughs> it has all in the name of it, right? <laughs> you saw the, all right. So storybook. I found out storybook. I was I was I was um. Trying to come up with a, a date component, <laughs> trying to design our little date component, and I'm like, there's got to be a good one out there. And there's, there's date components up the wazoo online. There's, there's um, bootstrap com date components. There's React date components. There's bootstrap components that have been changed into React. There's ones that wrapped in jQuery. It's a pain. So anyhow, I found a date component and it had a nice storybook with it. That I learned it was from Airbnb. Um, I'm like, what storybook? Let me figure out what that is. So I researched it. Storybook was, it was a way to compartmentalize components and easily test the functionality, which means I can create a component, I can test just that one component, I don't have to use command R. I don't have to say, let's go ahead and load the entire page up, log in, and refresh the page, and oh, and now, now my button is green. Let's do it, do it again, now my button is orange. So, um, long story short, uh, the, the company that did, Kadir, uh, did Storybook, Kadira, they went out of business, had like six months, Couple guys, Dan, see some, I don't know. But we think he's famous, we'll call that. <laughs> Everybody here probably, probably, probably has heard about Dan. Um, anyhow, Storybook recently released version 3.0, which I did not know when I signed up for this talk. All my stuff was written in for Storybook 2.0. And there was a large backwards compat compatibility breaking upgrade 3.0. <laughs> so I quickly had to rewrite everything in 3.0. Wait, wait, today, like, Oh, recently, yeah, yesterday, yesterday. Oh, <laughs> All right. You should have presented last day. <laughs> well, I, to be fair, I was supposed to do this in May, but then I, I, we have things. And then I do in June. I actually was on a cruise last week, and I, I brought my laptop to work on it. And I did not work on it at all. So, but I did. Um, <laughs> anyhow, we got back Saturday, like two a.m. Played four o'clock on Sunday. Anyhow, uh, Storybook is is reached version three point zero. It's um, it's the most popular open source tool for React. And we need to do like component testing. So, get into component testing, which I love. First of all, this is the best slide, the one about who am I. So, it's a little background on me. I've been uh, um, programming. How did that print today? Oh, I didn't print it. It must be on my LinkedIn. I've been programming since the late 1900s. <laughs> I'm still going to say that. So, um, <laughs> Uh, my first uh, job was in Visual Basic 6 when I went to an interview at the job up in Logan and they asked if I knew how to program Visual Basic and I said, sure I do. I went to Borders, that's how old I am, I went to Borders. I bought, a, I bought a book called Teach Yourself Visual Basic in 24 hours and I read it in 48 hours. I'm slow. But um, did that, I've uh, learned a bunch of other languages over the years, um, whole system, I, 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 I worked on a whole entire e-commerce system written in Perl using search and replace regexes. It was a pain in the butt, okay? If you've, ne if you've never, if you ever had to use template files, but instead of just, you know, injecting, you know, curly brackets, you know, user first name, now it's the regular expression to find it and replace it. I do not recommend it. Um, I currently work in, in React, which again, I was looking for a job and they said, you know, React, I said, sure I do. And um, watch the YouTube video and learn React on the weekend. Um, honestly, if you know JavaScript, you know you, you can figure out React. It's not, I'm not trying to tap my, myself, but I'm saying it's not hard. Um, I like movie cars. If you've seen me driving around, I live in, in Orem, Utah Valley. Um, yeah, I like movie stuff. So that's what I do. Um, let's get into the extra presentation now. Okay. 
That is not the one. Where is the presentation? There it is. Okay. So, by the way, if anybody wondering, I got this idea for this background here because the first React conference I went to was React Rally. Um, and it was put on by uh, Mike, his name Mike and Matt, is it the Brisky? Brisky, yeah. Brisky yes. Um, I actually hired Mike like one of the first jobs years ago, um, before he even wrote Axios and all that stuff. So, um, but I went there, I met him, I met Mike again, I'm like, hey, hello. So I tried to pattern the slides after that first React Rally, which was 80s themed. Um, okay. So this is a quote I found. Um, this is how we all program, right? First do it, first do it, then do it right, then do it better. How many times do we just skip, skip the last two, right? We just do it. We program, it's good enough, moving on, right? How many times, how many times do we write code and it's just done? I don't have time for testing. I don't have time to make sure it, it'll work in the future. I just want, want to get on, get on the next page. Um, the past couple of years, going back to my old code, I'm realizing how, how, how important the last two things are, is go back, write the test, make them work. Um, so, that being said, um, did you know that the word undefined is a string and a string is the same as a Boolean true and your building software will overcharge $200,000 because of it on accident. This is a true story. Um, yeah, also the, the word false is a string if your value is a true and your building software does not know the difference. And you will come in in the morning and you would have overcharged people two hundred thousand dollars one day um true story i worked with matt this happened we ended up finding it and it full sure enough it was a string that was um value to get true so if we had testing in place this would never would have happened um okay so the typical development cycle is we plan the code we plan it's basically a napkin drawing right we plan it with our focus for the next sprint um, the answer normally is fixing bugs from the last sprint. We write our code using command C, command V, command R, <laughs> stack overflow. We all go there, right? Also, the log, web inspector. We deploy it, obviously. It works on my machine. It should work, it should work live, right? And of course, we bug fix up live on the server using Vim, not Nano. Um, hopefully, I don't offend anybody on that one, but those of you who, who, who use VI or Vim on the server, you know, that's, yes. Um, this is, this, is, this is how we used to program. I'm trying to program actually right now. In fact, I, I, you know, I actually was on a live server last night as me code. It was not my finest hour. Um, how we should be writing code. So we plan it, we design it, we write some code, we write functional tests, usability tests, component tests, migration tests. Then we commit it, deploy it using uh, continuous deployment. Um, but show of hands, who, who uses a continuous deployment? Okay, less than half. Okay, we're not talking. You 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 commit. You say you know like get commit, and it takes care of everything. It runs your tests. It automates it. It builds a, a build build server, tests it, build a test server, tests it, deploy it to a server, all that fun stuff. Please do that. <laughs> it may, it's hard to set up, but it's so much better later on. So much better. Um, so. In writing this, I, I, I discovered there's actually a lot of testing libraries out there. Um, I'm sure everyone's used a lot, lots of these. They're all for different things. Um, so most of these testing libraries, I like noticed, will actually test everything. You can create screenshots with Jet. You can create screen, screenshots with Cypress. You can create screenshots with Storybook. Um, should you? Probably not. Um, you can use the React testing library, which is new. It wasn't here like a few years ago. Um, so we use leading. Edge, edge software, maybe, maybe, maybe not. So tonight we're gonna talk about Storybook. There's other ones to talk about later on if you guys want to. Um, but let's kind of, let me reorganize this one here, okay? All right. So I actually was going over, over this with a boy recently. I'm like, have you ever written a functional test? He's like, what's that? Okay. Um, and I had to kind of explain there's three types of testing when you are running your code. Functional test, component test, usability test. Okay. A functional test, those are tests on functions. It's like you write, you write a, a, a React reducer. It's a pure function. I want to pass in an object, get back an object. If I pass in theme equals light, 
Do I get back theme equals light on the back end? Those are easy to test. You can use Jeff for that. Those run every single deploy. It's super simple. Component test, that's more like, hey, is my button blue? I don't know, is it? It's very hard to test that in Jest, right? Um, usability tests, those are even harder to test, test using tool server like Jest, we use Cypress or Puppeteer. You know, can I log in using username and password? And if so, does it take me to the login screen and does it actually display these things on the page? So when you're right, so I'm gonna explain this early on, just so we're kind of clear here, I'm gonna leave my mark here, okay? Talking about just this one here to today, but please use all three in your coding. Um, is this new to anybody here? I'll make sure I'm not talking to like a bunch of PhDs. You know, <laughs> I just want to make sure. Does this relate to like unit functional end to end on your test pyramid? Yes. Is that kind of what you're showing yes. here? Yeah. Yeah. So what we're getting at here is there's, yeah, because because normally you're, you could normally you write, you, write, you write your code, right? And you like, you know, um, NPM start, or for those that like, that like icons. Yarn start, right? Um, and you were in your own test, you like, you like, like, you do like, like, like a yarn test, and that would run all of your Jest tests, but not storybook tests, not Cypress tests. Okay. Um, when you deploy, you're going to run yarn test and yarn build. You should be running yarn test and yarn build. That just runs your Jest test. Your store, storybook tests don't run, those are for component testing. Your Cypress test do not run unless you actually start up a, a instance of Cypress and you run it. Um, so, and that's why you know you want to be able to show these things. So let's get let's get into the media. Let's get, let's get into the media storybook of kind of when you use a, the component testing versus functional or usability testing. So to install it, this is very this is this is the meat of the entire presentation. It took me like two days to make this one slide here. Ready? So. To install it, you do npx storybook init. Done. Write it down, save it, whatever you want. This is actually on their homepage documentation. It's the same as doing uh, React scripts um, to create to create a new React, React app. You know, npx create React app. Um, they recommend you add storybook to an exi existing app because it's made to test components. You would need components to, to be able to test. All right. Get to some code examples. <clears throat> All right. There is my. Make sure I've got this running here. Do, do, do. It's right there, there. <laughs> there, there. Okay. Do. Here. I'm sorry, I just not got here. Share screen. All right. You thought you share a full screen window. This Any questions yet? Yeah, I'm talking a lot. No questions. I'm an amazing presenter there. <laughs> Is that it? Awesome. That's definitely. Should be able to do full screen. There we go. Okay. I got a question. Yes. Uh, you're talking about you could do functional testing by doing like yarn test and that you do uh, utility function uh, testing. What was the third one called? I forget. Usability. Usability testing when you're like deploying. But you didn't say the circumstance in which you do component testing. Where would that be? So a that's a good question. And component testing on this one is not so much. So it's part just part storybook. Okay. And it helps if you see storybook in action here. Okay. So for instance, I have a button class right here, right? Um, this is actually just one of storybooks when they, they provide to us. Um, it's a very simple one. It's pretty easy to, easy to kind of see. It's a button. How do I test it? I'd, I would just would run a just test on it and make sure it renders correctly, right? 
Um, I also could run just test, do a mock, to make sure that if I click the button, you know, the function is called. Um, but storybook testing is great because now I can design this component and I can do that one thing that we hate doing, that's use it in a meeting with people who are not programmers, okay? The CEO, the, the design group, you know, the, the guy, the marketing department, okay? Because when you install Storybook in your app and you create a story for it, which will look something like this right here, um, it's basically, well, we'll go over it here in a second, but we make the text larger. You what? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Command plus, right? No. Hmm. Maybe not. Yeah, IntelliJ. Have that one for IntelliJ. Not it. Command and then and scroll on the wheel. Mouse, mouse track that. Oh, oh, no, that was. Let's try. Else here. Let's see here. Um, Alt Shift Equals. I just that zoom, but it doesn't zoom it. Well, no, I cannot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we good. Um, let me see if I, I can. Think let's, 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 you know, let me try this right here. I have another option we could do. Uh, How's that? A little better? Better. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's get back to our button real quick here then. Um, all right. Standard button, it's just a React. Uh, you pass in some properties, you can change the properties on it. Okay. So the question is, how do I test if it works between the primary button, secondary button? How can I show this to my design team that yes, it works? Okay. And that is basically by installing a storybook, just projects and giggle and just cancel it right here. And just saying yarn run storybook, which is installed in your package.js, which I had open earlier. And you install it. Right here. So Storybook basically will run on a separate port. It runs its own Webpack server and it shows it will it will give you usable component previews of all of your components you have stories on. Okay. So if I run Storybook right now, it will run this. Got this little fun stuff down here. Which I like. And we'll run it, and then I'm going to actually share my whole screen. Does that look better? You. Sorry, he, sorry to the home viewers. Okay. It will run this on that port. And there's my button that I have. And again, this is its own separate Webpack server, and I can view the button now easily in here, which is great. Um, Are you just toggling between different states of the button? That one side or? Yep, so this side here, so that I have large, primary, secondary, and small, right? Um, you also notice I have uh, controls here, you know, small, medium, large, and I have a label here. I can change it all in here. I can change my the primary or secondary right here using the Boolean field. And this, this is all out of the box. And it's very simple to have this set up here. So let me show you how this is done here. On the left, each of those was its own story there. Each of them was its own. Yes. They're all in the same file. Right, right. right. Okay. That's so, first things first. Okay. My button's here. 
but the, all my properties are down here, okay? They're all commented and they're all set up as a Boolean or a string or one of small, medium, large right here, okay? Storybook reads the comments, it reads the prop types, and it creates these things at the bottom here. That's how it knows this that, that this one is a Boolean. That's how it knows that label is a string. That's how it knows that the size is small, medium, and large. So I could come in here and say biggest. And I fresh it and it says biggest. So it's smart enough to do all, all this work, work for you, which is hate doing extra extra work. Okay. Now, um, like you asked why we have these right? We go back to the story that we have set up here real quick. Um, we will basically create the component and then down here at the bottom, we have a primary, a secondary, a large, and a small. The only difference is we're passing in different arguments each one, uh, different parameters to each one. And that's how we're able to create these previews of it. Um, stories like I want a small button. So you I want a small a button. Story. Yeah, that'll be in. Exactly, exactly. So, um, all right, let me switch over to this over here. Okay, and where I personally use this one is like, uh, this again is an example, but we'll get to the meat later on. Um, you know, like you wanna show your, your, your header, logged in, logged out. Normally we're gonna pass in like a user to our header and if, it's, if a user exists, we'll show a logged in thing. But now I can present this to my design team and say, hey, how does this look? Is it lined up correctly? Do we want a log up button? Do I want the button to be primary? Do I want it to be, you know, um, uh, filled in or, or, or not? So that's the point of Storybook is I can now take a component and I can show it to people and present to them, not have to put it on the page and design an entire page to be able to display it for them. Yeah. Um, is there a code output as well? somewhere in storybook where you could essentially grab the code snippet to generate it it will as far as as code snippet as far as far as like this is the actual H, or jsx you use in your code yeah yes yeah, so you can do that um you can you can um add a mdx file to storybook it will read the mdx file it will display it in the documentation that you couldn't use um Although I've done that and personally it doesn't go over that well because normally documentation looks something like, like for instance on, on the toolbar, it will say the JSX is, you know, bracket, toolbar, close bracket. And after you write 50 of these, you get kind of lazy and you're like, toolbar shows the toolbar. Use the toolbar component to show the toolbar. And then you should get. But yeah, 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 you you can write more write more documentation for it. Um, additionally, on here, when you actually click on things like log out, you know the actions change at the bottom there. It actually shows you. Let me pull that up here. All of my buttons, buttons are being clicked. So I'll log out. This just, just allows you to see. Hey, my button was clicked. It passed this stuff into it. Are those the properties I want to pass into it? Um, Okay, let's come back to here real quick. Yeah, so <clears throat> let's backtrack a little bit, a little part ahead of myself. Okay, so to create a story, okay, you give the story a title, a component, and a template that you have. Okay, the title is optional. You will just use the name of the component if you want to, but it allows you to create a hierarchy by doing like, <clears throat> you know, um, UI slash button will create, you know, a folder called UI and then your button below there, which is what we see back here as um, button is button is under under components right here. Um, and if I come back to here and look at it, button is under components. So um, we give it the component we want button and then if we want um, more archetypes. We can do that. This just allows you to just be on the next slide. But basically, at every level of storybook, you can define your 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 defaults, your arguments, your argument types. Um, you can do it globally on a component or on an actual story. Um, 
So in this case here, we're saying every button will have a background, background color. Um, we'll go over this one in a second. Um, and then we create a template, which basically all a template is, is it really is just a wrapper for your component. So then you can bind multiple stories to it. So we create a template, we pass in our arguments, they just, they just get expanded. Everybody knows that dot, dot, dot expands it, the stuff. Hopefully, that's that. Um, and then we just bind all of our components to it. Our primary one will have these arguments. It's primary labels button. Our secondary will have these arguments to it, and so on and so forth. Our large and our small. Okay. Okay. So, um, which one of the args, but they basically allow you to render each state, state of your component. Um, like we had there on the button or the, or the login, log out. Pull my header here real quick. Uh, there we go. So logged in, logged out. And the head, header code basically says, hey, if I have a user, then we're logged in. If I don't have a user, then we're logged out. Very simple, simple things there. Um, <clears throat> And again, the arguments you can define on top or down below. Okay, and this is the slide I'm talking about here. So you can define your argument arguments either globally, on story level, or on instance level. Okay, so globally, there is a file in the storybook called, it's in the storybook folder to apps. So here at the top, top here. It's called preview.js. Also, main and a preview head. This is where you can add global stuff, such as global arguments, or say you want to import Font Awesome or Bootstrap. You know, so you just import it into there. Um, so this will add, for instance, arguments to every, every, everything. In this case here, they basically say <clears throat> our action. If there's anything called on, it's an action. If there's anything called color, it becomes a color picker. So anything called date, it Use it becomes the date. Um, these are just a thought by story, but I'm not get the example, but you kind of get the idea. Um, and your head is basically straight up. You just throw a bootstrap in there, and you have it. And this will render on every single template for you. Um, all right. How does the preview JS work again? You showed the color, what you were just showing. So How do those matches work? Sorry. Okay. So in this case here, um, Storybook comes with some defaults, and you can create your, your own if you want to. But the defaults is like string, boolean, um, color, date, select, array of types. Array of types, yeah. yeah. And so um, basically what we're saying here is, is um, our arguments, if, it, if, it, if it, there's an argument that matches the word color on any component, it will always render it as a color picker. So, uh, how, how does background like, in, in that example? Like, what does background mean? That one would be like, like for background instance. color or something? Yeah, so that, that would be. Uh, so, color. if there's a prop that's background, we're yeah. going to rent a color picker because you're assuming that's referring to color. Yes. Is that how I interpret that? That's that, 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 yes. okay. what it is. Thanks. Yeah. So, in this case here, mm -hmm. So in this case here, like as an example, a background color prop, the control it will use is color, which means coming back to here and here and going back to my button here. See that color rolls. I have background color. Not right. So yeah. there's just that's what you get. Okay. Yeah, I mean they're just helpers. So you don't have to write your own color picker, your own date picker, that kind of stuff. But again, it's smart enough to kind of figure this stuff out based on your prop types. Part of this, the reason why I like this so much is that it teaches you how to write good code. Well code, good code. Um, <laughs> well written. So, well written code. It just teaches you how to write, write well written code. It teaches you, hey, let's use prop types correctly. You know, let's not just make everything. It could be a string, but actually, it's an in 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 integer. Um, let's comment it for the next programmer. Um, you know, let's make our size not just a string of, you know, prop that string. It's actually one of small, medium, biggest. 
Okay. Um, which is great because now prop type allow me to auto complete stuff later on. Okay. Uh, this one, this one. Okay. Story ones, which went over, these are like your archetypes you can add, like the background color is a color and blah, blah. Your instance one, this is what we saw earlier. My primary button will pass these arguments into it. My secondary will pass other, other arguments into it. Um, everything's over it, you know, will override the previous one. So the instance overrides the story, story overrides the global, so forth. Okay. So we're going to use prop type to say like this time. I, I remember when prop types, prop types were part of the React package before it got pulled out. Like I remember before it was even invented. Um, story time. <laughs> okay. At our company, we have several React apps. We are we, we have one that's running uh, uh, Next.js. So we're, you know, leading edge, we've got server-side rendering. It's amazing. I love it so much. We have ones that use React Router and uh, Redux in the store. We have ones that use, use Redux the wrong way. Um, this is using like Redux form and everything is in the, is in the store. Every little thing, it, it's almost a cache. It's horrible. We have one project. Oh, this is mm. We have one project that's running on an, it's an alpha version of React, React 0 0.13. Um, this is before the DOM was invented in React. There's no DOM. Um, we actually have a file with every single HTML tag in it as being exported because that's how, how you have to do it before prop types was invented. Um, that we have to maintain. Um, there is no JSX either. I don't know if you guys know, back in the day, you actually had to write a, everything was a function. So like when you want to, when you want to create a div, it was a div, div, parentheses, pass in your attributes, comma, your, your children. It was, it's horrible, horrible. But we have to, have to support it. I wish we had prop type types back, back then because I looked through the code. I'm like, I had no idea what this thing does. I have to read through the code every every single time. Okay. Explain prop types. Just oh, yeah. are those okay. Like, okay. Okay. Wow. I sorry. I I get to have that. Okay. So when React was invented, they had React. Okay. And then they added the DOM to it. And then they said, let's split out the DOM to its own thing. React, React DOM. And then they had prop types, which basically said, how do we know what properties our component takes, right? I have a button. Well, I can, I can give it a label, I can give it a color, I can give it a size, but how do I know I can? Can I give it a widget? Can I give it a background color? Maybe just foreground color, we don't know. So they invented this thing that you can add to every component um, where you can basically, since your component is static, you can add a property to a property to it called prop types and prop types, Sorry, I'm getting hit myself. They had React, they had a DOM in React, they had prop types in React. And then they pulled them out one at a time to, into new projects. So now if you want React, you import React. If you want the DOM, you import is it React. <clears throat> yeah, DOM. Um, mess out here. React DOM. And if you want prop types, you import from prop types, which is um, this is installed automatically with React scripts. It's used in every single component. Facebook writes, it's used everywhere. If you download libraries that use prop types, um, it is, it is, it is part of React. It's just that they pulled it out and, and gave it its own library. Um, and all is whole job is just, it just defines your property types. That's it. So in this case here, I have a button. And it has these properties. It has an on click, which is a function, a label, which is a size, or sorry, a label which is a string, a size, which is a string, one of these three types, right? And the point of all this is that way when I'm down here in my header, I have a, where are we at? A button here. I get all my prop types are there. I know that I have a size, I have a label, I have an on-click, I can give it a size. 
and small, biggest, medium. Because I mean, this, right, this is my IDE reading the prop types, but it can do that because we have prop types. Um, if I give it one that's not in there, um, like say I, I, I misspell it, right? then when I run my app, there will be a nice big <coughs> yellow message in my, in my console that says, this prop, this prop does not exist on the, on this, um, on the, but, on the but button component. So you basically are telling your ID, you're telling React, telling everything. This is what my component can, can do. And your ID catch that before you run it, though. Like it'll put a warning. Oh yes, under yeah. your size. Yep. Or is that just a setting you have to put in? It's, a, it's a, uh, it will do it on. The linter. Linter, yeah. Yeah, so when, when you lint it, your ID, you have it, depending, depending on your ID, it will tell you that it's wrong. Um, but again, it, it won't tell you anything if you don't have it in, the, in there in the first place. So, um, okay. Um, for those of you who are still writing code in classes, <laughs> yeah, classes. Um, <laughs> They will stop changing their mind going back and forth in classes. And I have a story that I went back to. So, but um, uh, the prop types is actually a static variable, static property of the class. You don't write it separately, it's, it's actually in the class itself. Um, and yeah, not doing prop types, use prop types. And I can't say, reiterate that enough. Use prop types, okay? Because um, they're, they're, they're just used everywhere. Okay. Let's get to, oh yeah, cool. All right, prop types. Okay, so I'm just gonna prop types a little bit. So it defines your control, tells you whether you have a text, a color, a balloon, et cetera. There's automatic documentation. The storybook will read it and use it. I can come back here and look at my documentation for my button and behold, oh look, my description. How large should the button be? Um, that's coming from right here. My documentation right there all automatic um and an auto complete your ide can auto complete now it can tell you you know hey if 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 mike writes a component you know at home and i have to use it in my code how do i know what i can pass to it because he added prop types and added in documentation for it okay so key points here uh then we'll get the really big one um you add all your head tags to your story dot, storybook preview.head, the HTML, which is this file right here. Again, in the storybook folder, it's added on that before you. It's the only HTML file in there. It's pretty easy to remember. Add in all your CSS in there. Your, fi your files are named, whatever your, fi whatever your file name is, dot stories, dot JS, or JSX. I prefer, I prefer to use the story. Um, you can change that. Uh, there's a thing in here. Storybook is very nice when it comes to this. It's uh, this one. Yeah. So your stories are basically anything with the word story, your stories on it. Um, MDX for documentation, JSX, TS, TSX, TypeScript, all those things. Um, Yeah, your MDX is your documentation. Components should have prop types in them. Well documented, or well common documentation. And then the final thing, for those who are using uh, Redux or any wrap components, where you create your component and then you wrap it. Normally what you'll see is you'll have your, you know, export constant button and then below you'll have export default connect button normally, right? Um, make sure you export your, your unwrap component. Um, for those I'm losing you guys, all that means is copy here. Why not? I don't like to do this. Okay. If I import connect versions, I don't even have Redux. All right. Let's say I had a result. Okay. Normally you'll do something like this. And you'll have like a state and map 
to dispatch. Um, TypeScript become redundant with prop types, though? No, um, because TypeScript also allows you to type your functions okay. and you return value for everything. I'm guessing I actually don't use, use TypeScript at all. Okay. So, true. but I've used type languages a lot, and that's basically what you do it. Yeah, um, prop types are needed in TypeScript. Yeah. You can I guess I should all down the other ways and yeah, prop types are done in TypeScript. There's one distinction. I mean, so yeah, Storybook will read your TypeScript declaration types. You can build all the add-ons and do the exact same thing with TypeScript because it has that same type of information. The only distinction to keep in mind is that prop types are runtime checks. Yes, right? TypeScript is build time. So if you're building like a library, you might write it in TypeScript. Those types will help consumers of your library and their IDEs when they're developing. Um, but they're not going to see anything at runtime if some data comes back from an API and it's not what they expect. They pipe it into a component and things break. That may or may not be helpful. You might not care about that, but it's build time versus runtime. Yeah, yeah. Which, which might just determine what do you want? Do you want your end user to get a, a console log message essentially saying like, hey, I don't expect this. I expect this. Or do you just want the app to not compile? So is it for the developer? Hey, let me break this, and then oh, I know it doesn't work, or oh, I passed something in wrong. Yeah, so different, different outputs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really gone like gone in the days of, um, you know, like old jQuery libraries where you pass in properties, then you have like twenty lines of you know let's check everything first, but sanitize the data because now you can use prop types and or you can use a TypeScript for that. Okay, the top two here. Um, the two differences here: import button and import button from button. Okay, the differences here is this will will import my default export. This will import my um, just my export from inside the file. Okay, for those I, I had the problem when I first started React. Okay, which means in my button here, this bottom one, and actually I can name this whatever I want. It doesn't matter up here. I have to like you know add the button one if I want to. Um, uh, this bottom right here will import my uh, default right here, which is my connected component. I could have API calls in here. I could have stuff that, could, that you know has to download stuff from the Google API, which I don't want to run. Because um, what I want to do is display my component. I just want to display just the component. Um, in which case, I will export. Hey, James. Um, just my component here. So I have an export, a name, and then I have, or a named export, and then I have my default export. And when I'm testing, I want to have my named exports in here. Um, so because long story short is you want to pass your properties in. You don't want your app to set your properties. So that, that kind of makes sense. It may or may not. Long story short. Say you have a search result where you run an API call, you get back results, and then you pass pass the, 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 that JSON object to your to your, your component, right? When you're in Storybook trying to, to render it, you don't want to have to do that API call first. You just want to pass in prop. Okay, so the reason why came back, the reason why I actually did the Storybook way back when was because we were uh, redoing our entire search. Um, and I had to design a brand new search search tile here. I need a big screen here. I want to switch the screen. This, this is a good one. Um, so where I work, it's a uh, um, motivational speaking directory company. And we um, run the largest motivational speaking directory in the world. So we were redesigning our, our search. And so, so before this, it was horrible. It had like a circle, thumbnail, real fonts, like Times New Roman. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to change it. And so we have this right here. And I, we sat there and we, and we drew this up on a napkin. So, all right, design this. So we designed this right here. It's just, just like a component. We had no search capability at all. 
built yet. Because like we just knew we needed a picture, we wanted a name, we wanted some of that. And all this is just passed in. Um, I'll show you down here. Uh, under campus, actually. As just an object, we knew we had this. From our old search, we had basically an object. You know, with address and all stuff in there. And so we said, take this object and just use it to generate this tile. And then as we're talking with the. Uh, the owners and design team, they're like, well, okay, well. Can you show me how it looks if we showcase them? And I said, sure. That's how it looks. Like, oh, awesome. Can you show me how you look if it's uh, if we're an admin? I'm like, yeah, admin shows the bottom two things here. Where the default one does not. We're like, oh, how nice. You know, they even asked um, at one point, can you show me how it looks if we feature them and we showcase them? And I was sitting there on a uh, Zoom call. I'm like, here you go. That's how it looks. And we sat there and looked at looked at it. And we I mean, this is this is a final problem. So this took you know a few weeks of, uh, of tweaking, but it worked. And I could showcase this this to them, and then we were able to agree on the design. And then we uh, had a component already written there with all the all the prop types in there. We have the, we have the, this um, this story on it. So then when I built the, built the search page, I just pulled in the component. I already had all of the documentation in there and everything. And it was like the easiest um, page that, that we had created. It was the, bi the biggest page and, and very simple just to add this stuff in here. And I knew that all of these properties all worked and they were displayed correctly. Um, you can imagine trying to build you know, one right here and there's all these different variations of it. Do they have a city and state? Do they only have a have state? Or a country? What is their name too long? Um, what happens if their bio goes too big? What happens if they don't have any videos? All these little considerations you have to worry about. Which we were doing this on the web page. It'd be refreshing over and over again, searching for a name that's too long, trying to find somebody who's, you know, doesn't have a have a state. It's complicated. But using storybook, we were able to get this to work, and it was amazing. Um, so. Um, yeah, that is, that might be it. Hey, let me look here. That one. Oh, hey, yes. Did you know that you can generate thousands of Instagram followers for your sister-in-law so you just have sweets? You can. Um, in, another, in another life, when I was a, not as trustworthy as I am right now, <laughs> I learned that you can use Cypress you can use test suites to fill in forms like the Yahoo email registration form to create new email addresses. You can create new Facebook accounts and it's very easy. There's even sites out there, a bunch of call floors in India. whose job it is to sit there on the computer waiting for a capture to pop up, which they just type in the code and send it back to you. They'll solve captures for you. It's called death by captcha. Right. Um, you learn a lot of these things. There's a website you can go to download full customer data. It's for testing, but you can download credit card numbers, social security numbers, addresses, names. It's all random. None of it is true, but you can use it, use it to populate a test database or create thousands of Instagram followers. It's not hard. Um, just using using test suites. Uh, yes, you can do a lot of fun things that have nothing else to do with your with, with your job. Um, Okay, so um, this is basically a recap. You know, um, this is a quote from me. Um, by using Storybook, we could design a search result tile demo to the owners, make tweaks to it, and and uh, without needing to build the entire search page, which was a great thing for us. So if you're not using Storybook, and you know, use it. If you're not using Jest, please use it. If you're not using prop types, be on the bandwagon guides 2022. <laughs> um, so. That was that one. That's it. I'm done. Excellent. Any questions, questions for Mark? Yes. So we went over how Storybook takes care of like component tests 
Um, as far as like usability tests and functional tests, I know a lot of companies use object oriented programming languages like Python or Java to do automation. With those, would an object oriented programming language automation approach cover functionality and uh, usability testing? Or would you, could you only use those things that you mentioned? I mean, you could use it for, you could use it for any, everything. It's just how much do you want to build into it? Um, we use, well, I shouldn't log it hard. Account. So we use um, AWS for our servers. Um, they have a service called Ampli Amplify. Um, has anybody here used Amplify? There are a couple. So Amplify, you basically commit your code. It's a full, it allows you to, to deploy React apps to Amazon. And it will provision a server, build your app using a NPM build. It will run any Cypress tests you have built automatically and create screenshots of your tests. Um, and actually videos of the test running for you, and then it will deploy your code. Um, so then you can go back in and look, oh, you know, I deployed last night. Look, I have 25 tests. They all pass. And here's a video of it actually logging in, packing everything. That for me is a lot slicker than having to sit and write in another language. You know, how do I create a headless server to grab a screenshot from the server running here? So that would be my so I get the point, use the correct tool for the job for it. Your team structure, who do you have, whose responsibility are these tests? The developer who's driving the component um, or a junior guy that I tell to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually told junior guy, hey, we're in a project, project. I'm like, hey, um, so we have all these all reducers. Why don't you go ahead and write tests for all those? Like, it's a task, do it, yeah. She does it. So, um, yeah. I, I personally, I so we, we, we redid our back end last year um, using PHP for it, and we had no, no test before. And I sat there and I switched everything to Symphony, PHP 8, and I wrote tests for every single API. And we have 1,200 tests that run on every, every deploy, 100,000 assertions on there, and they all they all run. And now we, every time we deploy the API, every single test runs. They all have to pass before it deploys, and it's great. How long? How long does that take to run? Twenty-five minutes, <laughs> every deploy. If there's a problem, you have to do it again. <laughs> but it was great because because last week we deployed a whole new backend dashboard for our customers, and we migrated from version three to version four of the API, and it was as simple as changing the URL because we we knew all of this passed, and everything worked. It was it's amazing. Did they catch anything? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Usually, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we added um, uh, in the in, in the more just speaking world. There's a bunch of awards you can win or you can earn. I guess you know you you speak a thousand times, you get an award, and we added two more awards to the list, and our our award controller failed because it was looking for twenty awards and there were now twenty twenty two, so we had to fix that. You know? um, sometimes tests, tests don't pass for other reasons like. Our geocoder that check, check, grabs Google's API for checking latitude and longitude, it couldn't connect one time, so it didn't pass. So we had to fix that. Um, but we've got other ones in there that are just like going, one, we renamed a call, a database call, and it, it caught them all, and thankfully, because otherwise it would have taken take down a server. So, yeah. That's so worth it, the 25. Oh, it's so worth it. Yeah. It is so, the peace of mind you get when you, because you can, you, can, you can sleep at night. 5 p.m. <laughs> You can do git, git push and you leave your desk. And if it deploys, great. If it doesn't, come next morning and you're like, oh, I should fix that then. But it did not break anything at, at, at midnight. And that's the point. It's not break anything, not production. So, yes, hopefully. Please test, test your code. Yeah, please. Any other questions? We're we good. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, there's some good uh, examples if you just look up, you know, storybook. Uh, component library example. Like, I was toying around with PetSmarts, all their components, they have it all public. Um, so you can go and look around at, you know, what some people have built, how, how they use it. Um, there's, there's quite a lot of features for it um, that you can get into. I like the idea of being able to, um, and, and one reason that we're looking at using this is we've got multiple teams building multiple applications, but we all want those to stay within brand. And instead of 
the team building this app and the team building that app, writing the same code to get the same looking feel. We can just write all, all of our components into its own repo and then create something like Storybook on top of it where they can just go look, okay, here's the button component, show me the code for it, copy the code, paste it, and they didn't have to write that at all. And it's all centralized. And if they need to update or you make a change there, then you can distribute that to all the teams and keep those all up to see. Has its own headaches going that right, but that's one of the um, places also where this uh, can really shine. This was actually the one I found when I first started doing this. It was an Airbnb found a date in Airbnb site and they have this live playground. And sure enough, that's all it is. And I have all this cool stuff in the date picker. And then to point that out too, like he was saying, when you're sharing it with other teams and stuff, we ran it on localhost here, but as part of your build, you can have it deploy it to either your own server or the storybook servers and it uploads the code. And then you can just have www.mystorybook.com and share it with the other team. And it's just hosted for you and part of your build pipeline and everything that it's just there. Now everybody can see the updates whenever there's updates. And yeah. So, I mean, that's just, that's just makes it so much easier to, to, to have libraries and stuff. So, um, cool. Thanks well, sure. Mark, thanks again for coming. Give him a quick. Yeah. So I like to do this just to wrap up and then I'll give a few minutes to Mike, uh, just for a quick ending, but I have a, there is a bug in this code. I will zoom in. Take a look and uh, tell me if you can find it. Just for fun season. I just say funsies out loud. Just <laughs> forget I did. Forget that. Take a minute. Balance is fine. We have a function that, given the price of an item, the tax of the item, and a, and a discount. Is it a syntax error or is it a, it's like a, not a syntax it's a, error. It's a, yeah. Uh, this is really quick. I haven't thought through this all the way. I, I'm from Montana. Okay. <laughs> we don't have tax there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you put <laughs> tax is zero, Price then that would be zero. falsy and then it would set tax to 5%, wouldn't it? If I have something for $1, Zero tax, no discount. What should the expected value be of that? A dollar. Should be. One dollar. And run. Oh, I've got to save the file. Run it. Oh, it is not one dollar. So what happened? All the Montanans' lives. <laughs> I think Montana will die because they had to pay tax on something where tax was so. Yeah. So the problem. This is a JavaScript thing. When tax is zero, zero is evaluated as falsy, right? So despite it being a zero and a legitimate number that you passed, the OR operator following is going to say, well, zero is not true, so we're going to evaluate the next part, and then it's 0.5. So how would you fix it? I forget your name. I know we talked about this. Uh, Jesse. Jesse, how would we fix it? Uh, yeah, you could change those uh, pipes to be question marks if you're depending on what type of syntax you're, you if you have nullish coalescing. Yep. Um, so that's one way. Excellent. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Do you guys like those? I like to share. They're kind of fun. It's random. So if you don't know what nullish co coalescing is, yes. it's, it is relatively new still. It is. Yep. Right. It's only been out for like a year, maybe two. Um, and so that optional chaining and a few other things kind of came out at the same time. Um, go look up TC39, ECMAScript, and see this stuff. It, oh, it's, all right. it's cool. It's all right. That, something's wrong yeah. there. <laughs> uh, but yes, that's right. So it's very new. Uh, it's fun to go check out State of JS as a. Uh, you know, every year there's a report that goes there and knowledge coalescing and something. Want to give us a rundown of what what knowledge co coalescing does, though? Yeah, I mean the double pipes was. I mean that's just how everyone wrote JavaScript forever. Just okay, this is falsy, then we want this. But yeah, that zero being falsy is was probably one of the most common bugs. Oh, ever everywhere. It's it's all over the place. Uh, 
So the knowledge coalescing, rather than saying, hey, does this evaluate to um, falsy, like the, the, the or operator does, instead it actually is this undefined or null, then we go. So that basically the common bug of zero or false or the empty strings. So yeah, yeah. very similar. So yep, same. cool. Good find, Jesse. Well done. So the question is, Bell pipes work for years. Now we have no knowledge coalescing because they obviously no no undefined zeros. When they find a problem with knowledge coalescing, we're gonna have now another double another. something <laughs> that only, it only covers this. No. Not only nulls are covered. I'm trying to think what what's available. Is this is that available? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a power, you know, yeah. tax to the point zero five power. But double tilde used for anything yet? Uh, double tilde. tilde. The bitwise invert. <laughs> double tilde. I, not bitwise invert. I think I can be wrong on that. Uh, yeah, who knows? But to your point, yes, it's only the new thing that they add. So fix, fix the last thing. Fix that. So excellent. Um, Mike, you want to wrap us up? We'll talk a little bit about hiring and just network a little bit. Yeah. So thank, thank you all for uh, coming out. We had a good turnout uh, this week. If you are interested in presenting, uh, you can either hit me up directly on Slack, just Mike North, um, or do. these are great too. <laughs> yeah. Um, or on the Meetup page. There's a little Google sheet. You can sign up there. Um, if you don't, then you're stuck to listen to me give a presentation, which nobody wants. Please sign up. <laughs> so yeah, um, you don't need to be an expert. Um, you could be learning it, and you're saying, I want to learn this, and you can present on it. Uh, that's a great way to learn something, to get experience, is like, hey, I'm really interested in new things that came out in JavaScript, like no knowledge coalescing. I've never heard of that. Hey, I want to give a presentation on new things that came out to JavaScript, and that kind of gives you some motivation to learn it yourself. Um, and then teaching, I think, is always one of the best ways to learn and solidify. Um, so don't be afraid. If you get something wrong, nobody's going to come at you with pitchforks here. Um, and then uh, last thing, I like to do a uh, if anybody is hiring, we can do a kind of a quick shout out of the company you're at, what type of uh, role you're hiring for. So like I'd start uh, Nelnet Bank. Um, sorry, this is typical, right? We're looking for principal level kind of security focused architect. Um, also principal level uh, back end node engineer as well. Tax but I know you already kind of did a little. Yeah, uh, Aaron, you want to go ahead? Oh, yeah, I, I, you probably already said what I'm going to say. Tax but hiring lots <laughs> of engineers across a broad array of Positions. Yeah. My brother's in the interview process. We'll see how it goes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, go for it. Hey, my name's Ron. I'm the manager over at Canopy. We are hiring one senior React developer, typically front end position, from uh, middle of upgrading to React 17. So we're trying to get to the latest. Uh, if you're still on React 16 or lower, you're behind, right? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, cutting edge stuff. And uh, we work on tax software. It's not the most crazy tax, uh, interesting software, but it's a really cool place to work. Rob or Ron? Ron. Ron. Excellent. Talk to Ron if you'd like to, uh, afterward, if you'd like to look, learn more. Thanks, Ron. I'm at Amazon. My team is hiring engineers, front end engineers, and managers. We've got a lot of head client opened just pretty recently. We've got some big new stuff we're building. So, what was your name? RJ. RJ. Excellent. Yep. RJ with Amazon. Thank you. Anyone else hiring? I work at Omni. We're a venture capitalist software. Uh, we're hiring senior and mid-level React engineers and Ruby and Node engineers. Fun. Thank you. Cool. Um, and then, other than that, I didn't bring my uh, notes with me. So if I miss something, oh well. If there's any extra pizza, please take it <laughs> with you. Go for it. With your presentations, I know they used to do like lightning presentations or it was like five, ten minutes. Just is that an option still here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of anyone who wants to maybe do that yeah if you if you're not like looking into like a 30 45 minute if you're like hey i've got something that's short though it might be five maybe 10 minutes or something yeah we'll slide that in we'll pair it with um another talk so uh for sure cool. i guess last comment i'll close with on the hiring note uh tough times might be ahead we're all following the economy i'm sure you know uh it's a great opportunity for the Utah community to bond together and help each other out, you know, help as needed. You know, there might be some hard layoffs that happen, unfortunately, and that's that's very real and and difficult. It's not an easy thing. So I think the opportunity we have everyone here present to help each other 
find places and explore new opportunities, learn new technologies, I think is great. So uh, Mike, thank you for helping us make this happen. So with that, I think we're, I think let's wrap up. We'll probably, uh, we can stay in Meagle for maybe 20, 30 minutes and then we'll probably head. Uh, or if you'd like to head now, feel free, but take the opportunity to network, chat with everyone, all the, everyone that's hiring, feel free. And uh, we will see you next month, every second Tuesday. Uh, we'll see you here, same time. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.